Hello, and welcome to your 11th C++ lesson. This one is on for loops. Okay, so for loops, basically a really easy and useful loop. Uh, I personally use them a lot more than the while loop. They're really awesome. So, let's start creating them. I've just got my general program structure. So, let's just type for, to start off the for loop. And then we open some brackets to have our um, parameters. So, now, we've got three parts in the parameters. The first part is the declaration. So, we're going to declare a variable for use with the loop. So, we're just going to go int i, because for some reason i is used a lot in counting. Uh, i is zero, and we have a semicolon to end this section of the parameter. So, int i is zero, so we have a new variable called i, and we set it to zero. The next bit is the condition. So, for example, while y is less than or equal to 5, so while i is less than or equal to 5, do the bit we're going to do next. And then the third part of the parameters is the update. And in this, we're just going to say i++. So we're going to increment i. Uh, and then we just have some curly brackets. And in the curly brackets, you just basically put whatever you want to do. So in this example, we're just going to see out i. So let's just go through it one more time, and then we'll debug it. So it says, right, for, start the for loop. In the parameters, i is 0. While i is less than or equal to 5, do the next bit. And add 1 to i every time. And the bit it's going to do is it's going to output i. So if we just save and debug this. Here we go, it says 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Press any key to continue. Now... Uh, some of you may be wondering why it's a zero. This is basically because it adds ones to i after it's done it. So if we set this to one, and then debug it again, it now says one, two, three, four, five, like some of you might have expected it to do. Uh, basically, that is it. For loops are really simple. They're really cool. What you can do is if you don't want to do a certain section, you can just leave a semicolon. So what people do a lot of the time if they want to for loop forever, they'll just have four semicolon, semicolon. Uh, so if we want to see out hello forever, I'm not sure if it's going to let me do that, but let's try. Then it's going to go hello, 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 I'm just going to end there. Uh, however, it does have a use, having a forever for loop, because what we can do is we can say if something, I'm not, this is just an example, so I'm just making this up. If something equals something, you know, just insert a condition there. Then we can use the break command. So if something, like we could say, if we we're using the i example earlier, and we did only some of it, so we could say, yeah, i is this, i is that, whatever. In fact, let's go back to that real quick. Let's just say n i equals one. While i is less than or equal to five. I plus plus. Now, it's going to see out hello every single time. In fact, we're not going to have a condition. Yeah, we're not having a condition. And in the if statement, basically, we're just going to go, if i is less than or equal to 5, so it's what we had up here, then break. And that basically means break out of the loop. So, screw you loop, it breaks out, it goes, system pause, return 0, and then ends. Uh, obviously, it's not actually useful in this situation, but what you can do is if you have a load of variables, you might want, you know, if a is less than or equal to 5, and you might add things to a. But basically, break's pretty useful as well, and that will become more useful as you learn more programming stuff. So basically, you can add the for loop to your collection of knowledge, uh, have a play around with it, include it in some programs, do all kinds of different things with it, for loops are awesome, don't diss, um, that's the end of this lesson, have a nice day.